So a few weeks ago, we talked about brands you should buy if you want them to last. And I got a lot of different comments from people asking about brands I didn't mention. And the only reason I didn't mention those brands, for the most part, was the fact that, well, someone else makes them. And for some of those brands, they charge huge markups, literally just for the badge, to where you are taking your money, and you are taking a lighter, and you are burning your money. But I'm not going to do that because I live in poverty, and I'm too cheap to burn real money. And besides, if I wanted something smoking hot on camera, I would just ask my wife to do this video. But she's not here right now, so you get Ugly Ben. Now, let's talk about who really makes your appliances. And we're going to start with the biggest one, Maytag. You may not realize this, but Maytag is not a legitimate brand anymore. In fact, Maytag got bought out by Whirlpool in 2006 when they went bankrupt. And what that means is Maytags really aren't made by their own company anymore. They are made by Whirlpool. If you look at some of the designs, they're eerily similar, which is because they are the exact same thing. The knobs are different, and usually you will pay another $100 for the same exact thing for a washer or dryer, except for the commercial units. But generally, they are all the same except for the price tag. And this is why you want to really reconsider certain Maytags. Now, I like certain Maytags, like the commercial laundry unit, because they do have improved items, but generally, they're coming out of the same factories that Whirlpool is. But Whirlpool owns a lot of other brands as well, not just Maytag. Whirlpool also owns Amana, which is a really funny story because Amana used to be owned by Maytag when it was its own company, but ended up becoming a Whirlpool product, which is now a budget brand item. But what's funny about that is not only did Maytag own Amana or Amana, it's really Amana, I know everybody keeps yelling at me about it, it's Amana. But Amana was owned by Alliance Systems, which makes Speed Queen. So if you go far back enough in the 1990s, your Amana unit is actually a Speed Queen, which lasts forever. So depending on the year of manufacture, your Amana could either be a Whirlpool, a Maytag, or a Speed Queen built unit. But those Amana units are really whirlpools underneath that have the same parts. Now, if it was me, I would go with that Amana because it saved you $100 per laundry unit, which, well, well, 200 bucks, which would be good news for anybody just to save a dial or knob or it doesn't look like it's silver, which it's all plastic, right? So Amana is one brand that's made by Whirlpool currently. Now, another brand that is made by Whirlpool is Gen Air. Gen Air is a luxury brand, which was also owned by Maytag, that came a Whirlpool product. And Gen Air are extremely high-end units. And this is where the real scam starts, is because a lot of those Gen Air units are thousands of dollars more than their Whirlpool counterpart, despite them still being Whirlpool products on the inside. For example, why don't you consider this Whirlpool cooktop for about $1,000 from AJ Madison? This is similar to this Gen Air 30 inch cooktop. There's a little bit of difference on them. And when you get down to brass tacks, there's a exhaust blower on the Gen Air unit, but there's a $1,500 price difference between these two models. And I think that's pretty crazy. Now on some of these other units, consider this Whirlpool has a spark module on it, which allows natural gas to catch on fire. If you go through the model numbers, you're gonna find out that this spark module is not only used in this Whirlpool cooktop, but it's used in Amana, Maytag, Gen Air, and another Whirlpool brand, KitchenAid. Five different brands made by one factory and one company. And again, this is how you people lose a lot of money. And one of those brands that I got asked a lot about was KitchenAid. The truth about KitchenAid is it's just a rebranded Whirlpool that usually adds $1,000 to $2,000 on the price tag, well, for the exact same thing. And I mean, you know, to me, $1,000 is a lot of money, and I think to most of you guys it is too, but you're paying literally for the name, KitchenAid or Gen Air. And, and the worst part of this is the luxury brands tend to break more, not less, because you're adding on new features and new routines to those computers that make them just awful for repairmen. The KitchenAid five door refrigerator is known in appliance circles as being just a terrible unit because it adds additional sensors and control boards that will cost you $500 to repair because it just isn't built very well. So I usually tell people to avoid KitchenAid and Gen Air just because it's a luxury brand. Now, if you have $1,500 to spend on the badge and the blower fan, Hey, kudos to you, but for the rest of us, you may want to avoid 
uh, KitchenAid and Gen Air if you want to save money. Now, Whirlpool does own a few other brands that are less common like Roper, Estate, and Admiral. And they've acquired those brands, some from Maytag and some over the years through their own acquisitions that weren't Maytag. And those are also good budget brands that are very similar to a monitor where they may have one less knob and save you $100. So you may wanna look into those budget brands from Whirlpool because they're gonna have the same drivetrains in them and the same timers, just maybe one less option for hundreds of dollars less. And the same thing goes for fridges, stoves, uh, and dishwashers as well. Another brand that pulls a lot of tricks, well, really they all do, is General Electric or GE. Now, GE's been bought out by Hayer recently, which is a Chinese corporation, and a lot of people don't like GE or even mention in the comments that, well, they don't like GE because it's a Chinese company. Now, GE's kind of an interesting situation because they really haven't changed their brand much since they got bought out by Hayer. Now that's not the case for every single model, so don't grab the pitchforks and torches yet, but a lot of the GE stuff has stayed similar so far, but that's because it was already made in China before the acquisition. Hair washing machines underneath were secretly GE machines years ago before the acquisition and were using GE parts or maybe GE was using Hayer parts before they made it public, which has resulted in some less reliability for those top load washing machines, or at least I think that is the case. Now, even though Hayer owns GE, GE owns a few other brands as well. Cafe is their higher end version, which makes nicer looking, at least on the outside units, but on the inside, again, they're GE with more complex parts, which do lead to some more failures. Now, of all the luxury brands, I like the way Cafe looks, but that's just me. I am a sucker for bronze, I guess. Other brands that GE owns include Hotpoint, which it acquired a long, long time ago, and you can find the same exact washers, exactly like the Whirlpool Amana brand, that are $100 to $200 less for practically the same unit. And if you have to go buy something like a GE because the wash tub's huge, I would just go ahead and buy the Hotpoint because it's going to be cheaper, and it's the same thing on the inside. Now for our friends down under, at least in that area, when it comes to really knowing who makes your home appliances, Fisher and Paykel, or I've been told it's Fisher and Paykel, because I love pie, they have been bought out by Hare as of 2012. You may then want to consider both name brands against each other when you compare features. And I haven't been able to get my hands on any of the recent post-merger units, but given the comments that I've seen from others on my YouTube channel and others, the lower end units may have succumbed to a quality race that's more similar to Hare than F and P, so you may want to watch out for those sorts of units. Now there are a few other brands that GE has, like the GE Profile or Profile brand. A lot of times it says GE Profile, so it's not very different, but if it says Profile on it, it means that it's really a GE product that's just jacked up in price, maybe with a button. Now for their extremely high end, for built-in refrigerator models, they use Monogram, which ends up being their $6,000 plus brand, which I guess they're nice if you have that kind of money, but, well, I don't, so I can't comment other than the fact that it's really just a GE product. So when it comes to GE, it's really owned by Hayer, and that means they own the Cafe, Monogram, Profile, and Hotpoint brands as well. Now, Hotpoint is not made by GE in the United Kingdom, and in Europe, it's actually made by Indesit, which Indesit is then made by Whirlpool, so it's a huge stinking mess. So if you are buying a Hotpoint or Indesit, it's really made by Whirlpool Europe, which is a really weird situation, so be aware that it is their budget line, but it is a Whirlpool product over there. At least that's what I believe it is, according to Wikipedia. Another brand that's owned by another corporation is Frigidaire. Now, Frigidaire was the very first manufacturer of refrigerators in the United States, which is really, really neat. But they got bought out 35 years ago by Electrolux. And if you're in the United States, Electrolux is slowly making more and more products under their own name. But if you're in Europe, you know who they've been for a very, very long time. I got a lot of comments or questions about Electrolux washers and dryers, and they are decent units, especially over in the United Kingdom. But in the United States, they really didn't use that brand name very much. But Electrolux, and by extension Frigidaire in the United States, owns a ton of brands both in the United States and around the world. Now for Frigidaire slash Electrolux brands, that includes Tappan, 
Kelvinator, Gibson, and Zansusi, or at least I think that's how you say that last one, in Europe and the United States. So if you like Electrolux products, you may want to consider some of those sub-brands because they are cheaper and will be the same product on the inside, whether it's uh, Frigidaire in the United States or an Electrolux in Europe. That's a great way to save money if you're across the pond. It may not be dollars, but you know, I guess euros probably aren't as inflated as US dollars are. Now in Europe, there are a lot of consolidations going on. If you like Beko units, they're actually owned by Arcelic SA, which is another appliance manufacturer based out of Turkey. And it's also a holding corporation from my understanding. They own a lot of other brands, including Blomberg, Grundeg, Defi, Arctic, and Dahlance, among other brands. And those brands span throughout Europe and India. So those brands are all similarly related to one another and may have slight variations on the outside, but the inside are going to be generally the same manufacturers. And usually what happens with these manufacturers is the window dressing is slightly different from one brand to another. They may have a different control board, but you end up paying hundreds or even thousands of dollars for that one single feature. And I don't know, I, I would prefer just to save the money and spend it on something else like my smoking hot wife. And let's get to a big one in the US and Canada, which is Kenmore. You've always heard of that brand. It gets a lot of votes for people that own that brand. But the thing about Kenmore is it is only a brand. They don't make anything. Kenmore contracts out every appliance they have to different manufacturers. Now, it used to be back in the day, manufacturers they contracted were really high quality manufacturers, but it's really not the case anymore. It used to be that Whirlpool did all their laundry units, generally Frigidaire did their refrigerators, and then various companies did their dishwashers. But that changes a lot lately to where instead their LG, Samsung, or Daewoo brand appliances. And I don't know, Daewoo makes good guns, but they really don't make good refrigerators. In the US, if you have a Kenmore refrigerator with the starting numbers being 111, it's a Daewoo and you want to avoid it at all costs. They're very difficult to get parts for. In fact, here is the lookup sheet for every Kenmore appliance ever made. If you look at the first three numbers, this will tell you exactly who makes it and whether or not you should be worried about it or not. And that's not to say that every single Kenmore product is bad. If you get one made by Whirlpool or Frigidaire or GE, they're pretty decent. But when you get into the other brands, it starts to drop off in quality. And that's why I don't talk too much about Kenmore, just because I know who really makes the stuff. And it used to be quality, but anymore, it's very hit or miss, depending on the manufacturer of the actual appliance. Now let's talk about other giant Chinese mega conglomerates like Hisense. Hisense owns controlling interests in a lot of different companies, but the main one that they own a controlling interest in outside of their own brand label that you see more and more popping up is ASCO. Yes, washer in Europe that only lasts a few years is made by a Chinese holding corporation, and that shouldn't be surprising. Hisense are basic units, but remember, they also make ASCO, so if you want a cheap unit, you get what you pay for when it comes to Hisense and ASCO, but be aware that they are going to have the same internal components. Another major Chinese company that we're starting to see in the United States is Medea, or Media, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And I don't know why a southern black woman's making her own appliances under a Chinese holding corporation, but it is what it is. And one of the things that appliance technicians have seen, and it's probably known in corporate circles, that these appliances look a whole lot like Samsung. And the thought is that this company makes a lot of parts for other manufacturers, even U.S. manufacturers on their Chinese components, and just relabels them. But now they're starting to go factory direct for the lowest of the low-end appliances straight from China. And I'm not saying necessarily that it's the worst brand possible. They're pretty easy to fix. And if you look at this media heating element, it looks awfully similar to a Samsung heating element or even an LG heating element, doesn't it? But nevertheless, it's its own company, so you want to be aware of that company and some of the other subsidiaries that could be popping up in the near future. Now, one thing most people won't tell you is when it comes to microwaves, Midia makes most microwaves on the market, including Black & Decker, Whirlpool, and even Toshiba units, and they make a lot of different appliances outside of, you know, what we talk about with stoves, fridges, washers, and dryers. So a lot of your units may say different things on them, but they're really media made. And speaking of Asian brands, 
Let's go to Samsung. Samsung only owns one other company that I'm aware of in the United States, and that's Decor, which is an extremely high-end premium brand in the United States. Their units tend to go for four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000. I'm not sure if all the parts on the inside are now Samsung, or they just bought it so they could have a luxury brand, much like Whirlpool did with KitchenAid back in the day. But you want to be a little bit suspect if it has the name Samsung on it. They make great phones, but other than that, I'm not a fan of their appliances, at least in my experience. Now, LG is another Asian brand that I'm not aware of having any other sub-brands attached to it at this time. Although, again, they're eerily similar to most Samsungs, and I think they use some of the same factories, but have different tolerances because LGs seem to last just a little bit longer. Now, if you're in the United Kingdom, you probably know that Hoover is actually made by Candy already. Um, I'm not in the United Kingdom, so I don't know a whole lot about those brands. But if you buy a Hoover, it's really a Candy. Now, the only Candy I know of in the United States is John Candy, which was amazing. So you may want to consider that brand if you're in the United Kingdom or the British Isles. But, you know, it is what it is. And finally, one of the last ones we want to get to on the list is uh, Bosch or Bosch-related products. Bosch owns Siemens, which is a generally high-end brand in Europe, which they make pretty good units. But again, it's a different brand. You may pay more or less for that Siemens brand just for the name, but really on the inside it's a Bosch, so take it as you want it. But they tend to make pretty decent units in my opinion. Now, the Bosch Corporation also owns Guggenau, which is another German appliance company, and I probably butchered that name too. So you may want to consider those three brands as being from similar factories. And going over that whole list of the different brands out there, hopefully you stop getting scammed by some of the higher-end brands or do more comparison shopping to save yourself money. Because I don't know about you, but you know, saving that money is a pretty good idea. And hopefully with this list of brands that you have under your belt, you can go to your appliance store knowing which brands are going to have the same internals for more or less money. And I hope you guys have a great day. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe. We'll be doing more content in this style in the future. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.